Hi guys, Derp Nerd here, and coming at you after lots of schoolwork. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to disassemble this SSTO because it's probably the most basic SSTO you can build now with the new Repair engine. Um, so just going to pull it apart here, dissect it a little bit, and uh, yeah. So start with the cockpit and... Uh, I just use the Mark II, um, yeah, right there, and just uh, one RAM air intake, which is an oddity for SSTOs, for me at least. So we're going to do basic jet fuel, which is under the fuel tab, right there, and we're going to use the 400 series fuel tank, and this will be plenty of fuel. Uh, we are also going to use a new repair engine, which is awesome. Um, this will automatically switch between jet and rocket mode. It's a little heavier than jet and a little less thrust, but it's great for our purposes for just a simple single-stage orbit craft that requires minimal effort. So this is the core of your design. You, you want to turn on mass, uh, center of mass and center of lift and grab a couple delta wings. Put the center of lift in front of the center of mass. Uh, because we're going to add on these control surfaces and that's going to move it back. So now try and uh, move the wings around, try and get the blue inside the yellow. Uh, as long as they're relatively close, it's fine. We'll be adjusting this a little later. So we're going to grab uh, a vertical stabilizer and you can choose just about any of them from the list, but I just like this one because it looks cool. And we're going to put it down there. Now you can uh, right click on the control surfaces now, but you don't really need to for these. Uh, the landing gear, you want the front one to be steerable. It's not really going to matter that much. And uh, we're going to put the back ones on the wings, actually. So yeah, just showing you. See, steerable. It'll automatically be set to not steerable, so you're going to have to change that manually. So now we put these on the wings, use the E and Q keys and WSAD until it flips around to the right way, and put them on. Now you can see that the center of lift is off, so we're going to adjust that. Go ahead and try it. It's a little derpy here. <laughs> All right, just get it relatively close, the two centers. So now you're basically set. Uh, save it and launch it. I mean, this is as basic as it gets. So I cut out a little of the load time, but... Turn on SAS, throttle up, hit the space bar, and it'll start flying on its own, basically, which is great. And as soon as you're off the ground, you can lift that landing gear. So once you're a little bit off the ground, pitch up to like 60, 70 degrees. Okay, so we're going to speed up time here. Uh, stay at this pitch for about, uh, oh, up until you get around maybe 8,000 meters. Uh, I'm going to pitch down a little bit. You can do the same. Uh, you just want to pick up speed. Uh, one of the things I did do was I took the liquid fuel in the jet engine tank and I turned it to half. You don't need it all, it'll make it a little lighter load. So we hit 10,000 meters and we're going to pitch down to about 20 degrees, between 20 and 30 degrees, because you're trying to pick up as much speed as you can. You can see we're at 500, 600. Uh, you can also notice the intake here, it's actually a little glitchy. The rapiers, uh, usually cut out around 0.02 but for some reason it glitches and doesn't show that you're at 0.02 so 1200 meters per second is your aim but try and get it going as fast as you can before it shifts over to rocket and there it goes shifted over to rocket and you'll notice that I pitch up as soon as that shift to rocket occurred so I got a decent uh, periapsis well apoapsis actually about a hundred thousand meters which is great and now I'm going to circularize it. And now uh, you also can't trust the fuel gauge because uh, it only shows liquid fuel. So we're going to go around and try to land relatively near the space center. And I'm editing in post, so it's, um, I can tell you I'm not going to. So I'm going to switch all my fuel to the front tank. You don't have to, but if you're going to burn much more fuel, then it's probably a good idea. So there's a space center. I pitched down to try and catch as much uh, res air resistance as possible, but it doesn't work out so well. Um, ways you can improve this design. Uh, you can add new generators. All right, I'm going to try and flight some land here. 
And we get quite the long reentry effects. This is four times speed in post. So, um, if you reduce the amount of liquid fuel to about half in that uh, front liquid fuel tank, you'll have a bit more margin for error. Um, you could add more air intakes, those wouldn't hurt at all. Yeah, th this is why I transferred fuel to try and prevent as much flipping as possible. Uh, also, with the control surfaces, I did mention you can disable various um, which controls it uses. So, like, uh, I could have the ailerons, which are on the wings, they could, they could not mess with the yaw. And then I could have the vertical stabilizer only mess with the yaw. But I wasn't too concerned about that. So, now we're going to come in for a landing. I slowed it down to one time speed because it's a fairly eventful landing. Um, it looks pretty smooth, and you can kind of see a hill up there. And we're coming in. So yeah, we, we got into orbit, and I pitched down too far. And... Oh no! Oh. Oh. And beautiful. Now I try and flip it over, and then I realize... Oh, I turned my torque off to save the electricity. So we're going to try and... No. No, we're not. Uh, we're just going to flip it over some way. And there he is, Dobbles Kerman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good time and uh, enjoy making your own SSTOs. Take care.